Okay, in this video I'm going to be going over how to repair your typical audio cables that you plug in MP3 players and speakers these days. Uh, I'm not sure what the actual size is. It's like a 2.5 or a 3.5 or something like that. Stereo. There's three conductive points on this male end that plugs into the female end. Now, these often break. And they usually break at the joint. If you have a pair of headphones, they usually break at the joint. It might have broken at the joint between the headphone and the cord too. But the way you test out is pretty pretty simple. You plug one in into your MP3 player, and then you plug one in into your speaker system. If you jiggle around the joint to the headphone, and the audio cuts out, it's probably at the headphone. If you jiggle around this end, and the speaker cuts in and out, that's probably where it's bad. Okay, I'm doing this test right here. Here's the jack, and only one speaker on the left is turning on. And I think this is the end, so I move it around. And there's, oh, there's the other speaker. So I know it's this end. I can almost get that other speaker to come in. There we go, right there. There we go. So I know that this end of the cord is, is bad. And this is the end we're going to cut off and replace. Okay, now that we found that this end of the male to male uh, audio connector I have, MP3 connector I have, is the, the bad end. I'm going to cut it off below where I think the problem is. I pretty much figured out the problems in the jack itself. That's usually where it happens. We're going to go ahead and cut, cut this. This old piece off. Bye bye old piece. And these usually have three wires in them. Sometimes they just have two. There's a positive, a negative, and a ground, typically. So we'll go ahead and figure out which gauge is going to work best here for this wire. And it looks like 18 is a little too small. Looks like 16. So go ahead and put it in this. 16 gauge here. This is technically, it would, I don't know if this would say this was stranded or solid. This is just the outer sheathing. And there is the sheathing. And that gauge was actually too small and it cut off a bunch of the ground wire, so we're going to have to try again. And then those pliers, the cutters on the pliers didn't work very well, so that's why you should have a pair of flush cutters. Sometimes the cutters on a pair, the pliers don't work very good. I'm going to go ahead and try to use this pair instead. This one I like better. I'm going to try 14 this time because 16 took off too much of the wire. Um, just carefully the pull, push. And this time, looks like it's clean. We didn't get any of that wire. Alright, so when these will have insulation usually and this one doesn't have insulation these two wires here are the negative and the positive you're gonna have to test to figure out which one's which and this other wire right here this is the ground wire another tip if you have wire audio wire like this that has insulation on it that's too small of a gauge to use with any of the wire strippers you have typically you can just yank it off you just take the plier end of the wire and you just kind of pull but not too hard otherwise you'll just rip the whole wire off and you pull and there we go the wire the copper core remained and the plastic just came right off you didn't even need some really small size of wire stripper so there's another tip okay sometimes when you strip audio wire you'll find that it doesn't have insulation on it it's just colored magnet wire like this 
Usually the gold is the ground and the red is the positive in the middle and usually the blue or the green is the end here or something like that. You always have to test it to make sure. But this will have insulation in it. And you don't want to get that on your soldering iron. It will just make your soldering, it will make, it'll make a mess when you try to solder it and prepare it. So you need to untwine it. And you have to separate the strands here from the insulation. The insulation is this white, looks like white hair stuff. So here's stuff. You can kind of see it. Get these other wires out of the way. Here's the gold wire. And the background's white so you can't really see this, this hair stuff. So here's the, you can see how that's white with the red background. And there's the gold, and there's this, this insulation here. So, go ahead, and you want to try to cut that insulation off before you solder. So there's the metal, and the metal kind of spring is kind of easy to get out of the way because it stays, but this white stuff will just stick up straight, and you just cut off that insulation. Like that. It's kind of hard to cut. You need a good pair of scissors or something. You want to cut off that insulation. See, it's in the flush cutters right there. Before you solder. You want to do that with all the wires because they all have that in there. This red one will have it too. And it takes a little bit of time. And you get that insulation out of there. And you cut it. Like that. There's the insulation. Now, you can... If, you can just burn the insulation off, but it'll leave like sticky gunk all over the wires. But since this is magnet wire, before you solder it anyways, you're going to have to burn the insulation off. Because that's there's a thin veneer of insulation on magnet wire. It actually does have a coating, so these don't short. But it's a very thin coating, and the only way to get it off is by burning it. So you burn it, it burns, insulation burns. That's how you can tell it has that kind of insulation on it. That's how magnet wire works as a thin stuff. And that lighter will also burn off the the white hair kind of insulation too, but it's it's gross to burn that stuff, so it's better to cut some of it off first as much as you can. And then you're ready to solder this wire. So first we take one end and we just hold it on one end of this jack here. And then we take these wires that we've cut the insulation off and got the uh, cut coating, magnet, magnet wire coating off and we see if there's continuity. And there's not on this one. Oh, yep, there's continuity. So this first one, this is the ground. I've already tested this wire and I know that it's a dud, but let's just say you don't know it's a dud. So you go to the next one, the one at the end, that's the easiest one to test next. And you go through all these wires. Nope, doesn't connect there. Sometimes you have to give it a little bit of time. Like I said, I already tested this one and I know it, the jack's a dud. Then you test the next one. Nope. You can even just press all of them on there. See if there's continuity between any of them, and there's not. So maybe the end of this cable is not somehow there's an open in there. And then we go to the middle, 
right there. We hold it in the middle on the jack, and there's still no no continuity. Oh, a little bit. Now it's touching the the ground section there. It's hard to get it in the middle. You have no continuity. So you know this jack right here is a dud. We're not going to use it. Now this one, this one does work. Okay, so let's say we want to know where does this red where does this red wire here go? This red magnet wire. Where does that go? This red one, or the kind of shows up there. It's red. Where does the red one go? So we go put one end of the voltage meter there, and then the other end of the voltage meter. We go through. Nope, not at that first. Oh, in the middle. So the red magnet wire connects in the middle right there. This blue one connects at the very end. So that way we connect everything. When we solder this end to this end, we get everything in the right place. Okay, I touched, just tested this wire and I learned that the gray is the middle, the white wire is the tip, and then this copper wire that wasn't in the sheathing that was wrapping all the wires, that's the ground right here at the end.